So you're actually the first non-RTR employee to be behind this wall. It's cool to share this because not many people get to see this, this process. Today, we're giving you an exclusive look at the RTR Lab, which is Vaughn Gittin Jr.'s play place for everything cool, customized cars. We're going to give you a sneak peek, a behind the scenes look with the man himself, Mr. Vaughn Gittin Jr. And here he is, the man himself, Vaughn Gittin Jr., man. What is going on? Appreciate you, man. Thank yeah, you so much for, uh, out. man, thank you for the invite. So, you know, we just got back from the launch of the RTR Spec 2. Did you have fun out there? too much Good. it was too much fun Good. so Good. i appreciate the invite to that as well i think everybody really enjoyed the car um i know that our youtube subscribers have really enjoyed it it's been the number one video we've posted in quite some time awesome um so you've obviously built something you've struck a chord yeah good no it, it was a really cool event it was really cool for us to see you know, we've obviously been building a great culture around rtr but to see such a you know so many just a very young diverse vibe so many mustang owners at one spot, it was it was really cool to see what, you know, we see it at events, but it's a lot more spread out because obviously you go to a, a, a more traditional Ford event, you know, there's a lot of different types of people there. And yeah. so it was really cool to see kind of the, the culture that's being grown around what we're doing at RTR, so. My goal with RTR was to create a new perspective mm -hmm. of what Mustang can be, you know, when I got into a Mustang in 2005, you know, I went and bought, well, I fell in love with the new Mustang, SO 97, no five. And um, we went and paid over sticker for it. We built it into a drift car, but then there was nothing that like spoke to me, like all the aftermarket styling, you know, what pe how people were presenting the Mustang was actually the reason why I was an import guy. Yeah. So once I got in, into the Mustang and fell in love with the culture, fell in love with the car, fell in love with torque, uh, I just had some reflection and I was just kind of like, man, like it's just because of the way it was presented to me, like my perception of, you know, I wasn't that guy. Yeah. And so I wanted to create a new vision of what Mustang could be. And that's what RTR started as, yeah. you know, in 2010, um, you know, that's, that's what all it was. And now obviously we're doing Bronco, F-150, Ranger. Yeah. It's grown, you know, and from what it was originally, but that's where it started. And I just wanted to create something cool and new yeah. around Mustang, but now that mindset is a, a new perspective on every vehicle, yeah. you know, and, and you know, we say available to all, not for everyone. I'm very yeah. comfortable with those that gravitate towards what we're doing. I'm not trying yeah. to create vehicles for everybody. You yeah. know, Ford does a great job at that. So yeah, welcome to the lab. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so you mentioned 2010. You. Is that a 2010 model? Yep. That, that is our, I'll, I'll take you down the whole, the whole line. Yeah, so this absolutely. is our like, showroom so when we eventually open to the public and i don't know what i'm waiting for at this point but <laughs> this will be kind of like we'll have some some barriers here and people will be able to watch the shop which by the way is a ghost town yeah today the team uh just got back from florida just got back from a win at congratulations Florida's second win in a row and yeah. they all got the day off so the cars are still in the trailer and um, everyone's just kind of resetting before That's they awesome. come back in for the thrash. But anyway, people will be able to come and watch what's going on in the shop. Very cool. But we've got a lot of special vehicles here. Uh, this is the RTRC. So when we launched RTR, we launched it with this car and our first prototype, which I'll show you in a minute. But we basically took this car, completely took all the sheet metal off it, and we used all of the molds from our race cars to make a complete carbon bodied Mustang. Wow. Um, we were going to do 10 of these, but then we got so busy with other RTR business, we decided to just not make any more. So this is a one of one, 100% carbon fiber. I think we, a lot of people ask how much weight did you drop? We dropped about 500 pounds out of the wow. car. So, uh, and it looks just, a whole lot better. It looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, it looks amazing. It's held up really well, you yeah. know, for, um, it looks like all the weave is going in the right direction too. I mean, that yeah, yeah, we get, I wanted, I was in, inspiration, but from a Pagani Zonda, but you can see like across all the seams of the car, the wow. weave all lines up. So just, you know, it's got carbon HREs, the, the hoops are carbon oh, yeah. on them. And I wanted to, you know, when we came out of this car, you know, we were launching RTR and I wanted mm -hmm. people to see us for our attention to detail yeah. and quality and so um, mission accomplished so on that, that was that was that uh this is my personal r32 gtr we built the mach-e 1400 uh which you may or may not yeah. know about yep. so when we built that car i knew i was going to be doing some all-wheel drive driving so yep. i wanted a mechanical all-wheel drive car yep 
to practice in because yeah. I hadn't had much wheel time in that. Yep. So I'd always wanted an R32 GTR. I mentioned to you, I grew up yep. as a teenager, as an import guy. And, um, and so I had this car built uh, by uh, some good friends of mine, a shop I used to be a, a owner in actually, MA Motorsports. And um, wasn't their fault, but it took longer to build this car than it did to build the spaceship. Mach-E 1400 that we built. So we won't get into the details of that, but anyway, we have it here. Then uh, matching color, uh, I have my personal uh, Spec 5. So this is one of our 10th anniversary cars in 2020. We celebrated yep. RTR's 10th anniversary. I won a championship that year yep. and it was RTR's 10th. So I had to treat myself to a Spec 5, which That's I absolutely awesome. love. And for those of you wondering, it is an automatic. It is an automatic. It is an automatic. A lot of people hate on me. I, I love the 10 speed and I have so many manual vehicles yeah. that I just decided I wanted to get the 10 speed. I like, I like. It's nice to keep shifters. your left foot a break when you. Every now and then. Yeah, just every now and right. then, right? <laughs> so this is our first, uh, our first prototype. So this is okay. P1 ever. Uh, the first car we ever made in RTR. This is what we use in all the launch marketing. I actually gave it to my father and before he passed away, he told me that I had to keep this for my firstborn. So this is Gunner's awesome. car. That's and now awesome. I got to sit on it for another 10 years. So, <laughs> Does he know that yet? Oh yeah, whenever he comes in, he gets in his car, honks the horn and- That's awesome. You know, he's got it in his playroom. He's got a picture of it. That's awesome. And uh, this is uh, our first uh, P1. So there's our first RTR. Okay. It's so funny looking at these versus the new one and yeah. it's how far Mustang has come. Yeah. Even just next to the Spec 5, you know, it's yeah. just so like, these are so classic, but they still look sick. I, yeah. I you know, they're still really cool. So. That's our first uh, first car we built. And actually, funny story, my first lease vehicle I ever got from Ford in a contract, and then my first car that I ultimately bought new really? is that car. That so, is so cool. If you had to sell all of these cars but one, what's the last one? What's the one you hold on to? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so I think, uh, I think I would probably keep P1 or the carbon car. It'd be a yep. toss up. That's awesome. Now for fun level of like the ultimate just epic driving experience yep. the spec five all yeah. day long yeah well uh, we've had a chance to to do the full review of the spec two yeah but I, what we don't have is reasons behind the decision sure yeah I'll, I'll show you so this this side this is all rtr so this is prototyping vehicle test fitting built by rtr all happens on this side of the shop we got a brand new 3d printer that's just going in a lot larger 3d printer than the oh, other awesome. two that we have but so we're coming here, we're doing some test fitting on the Fun Runner, some new production products that have come in. You can see, you know, parts that are laid out right here. This is all stuff that's yeah. in the queue to get test fit or reconfirm. Yeah. Uh, it's quite the process of making parts, uh, <laughs> believe it or not. And the well, way that we do it is um, we're very sticklers on quality. Like we, uh, we do all the engineering up front so mm -hmm. that when you guys get the parts, if you're doing the builds or your customer gets the parts, they're building that it always fits, it always works. So yeah. we spend a ton of time engineering. It's just been one of the things for me, like we're so close with Ford yeah. and our relationship, I've been curating with them yeah. uh, for over 10 years. I take not only my brand and our quality serious, but we're representing them. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I wanna be the highest quality, you know, that you can get for, for absolutely. Ford so what, what is this? So this is, uh, this is basically our test mule. So what you saw in the spec two, started here so you're actually the first non-rtr employee to be behind this wall none of the interiors is production intent this is a very early vehicle that we got we were able to get to do some testing yeah so basically all the parts that you see on here are the 3d printed parts whereas mm -hmm. the parts that you see on the actual car are the first production okay. samples so you literally 3d printed this in-house yep that yep. is so cool yeah everything um so we'll have, this is, is so cool. this is printed, the rocker splitters. We have some early, uh, early grills would be flopping around here. And so, you know, everything's apart. That's all awesome. Test fitting. So this is a, uh, this would be a 3D printed chin. So you see how this chin is <laughs> all 3D printed yeah. and kind of bolted together there. How cool So is this that? is how we do test fitting, right? Everything's built in CAD and yeah. then we confirm it on the vehicle and then we'll send the cat out for tooling okay. and then we get actual production samples that is so cool so you know those parts are obviously extremely expensive but it's part of yeah. the way we have to do things so that we can get the market in the right times and yeah. things like that whatever we print comes out of cad 
is basically what you can expect. So we'll make yeah. little changes, right? You can see how there's a little bit offset here. Mm -hmm. So we would have filled that, you know, some things change from CAD to production, Yeah. you know? So um, we're working with Ford and we get all their data. And as they make changes, we confirm the changes on our part. So it's a very collaborative effort to, yeah. to do it the way we do. I'll just show you a perfect example, right? So that's a 3D printed piece, right? You can see the glue and everything because yeah. we can only do such big and then here's the production part. Oh wow, you can see that the, the finish is definitely a lot smoother. Yeah, that is so neat to see that process of what it was and now what it is. One thing that I noticed about the new RTR Spec 2 is the LED lights. They are different than the previous generation. Yeah. Is it, what, what are they calling a three bar or what, what's the? Yeah, it's, it's tri-bar, which, tri okay. which is, you know, definitely, uh, you know, a, a nod to the, you know, tri-bar of the Mustang, right? The headlights, yeah. the taillights is a very synonymous, but our approach was more like, we're like sucking you in. Like, it's yeah. kind of like a, it's like a, a wormhole, yeah. if you will. And, but you know, that's where your air flow's coming right into the yeah. intakes, right? I mean, you've got both, you know, both of the, you know, what Ford's done with the Coyote, right? The dual intakes, so yeah. your air boxes are right here. And then obviously our, our um, lights go right into that, so. That is so cool. It's cool to share this, because not many people get to see this, yeah, this process. Yeah, I appreciate the exclusive. Yeah, we take, a, you know, we take a lot of pride in, in what we do. And then, yeah. as, you know, that's the appearance stuff. And then the suspension, um, you know, the the Spec 2 was debuted on our, you know, first articles of suspension. Mm -hmm. Now we're actually, you know, we have a little bit of a little ways before launch, okay. but we're actually going to confirm all of our final spring rates, valving, sway bars, all Very of that. Cool. This car will be going to the track and we work with uh, Billy Johnson, mm -hmm. who is a you know, very high end road racer and has done a lot of vehicle dynamic stuff yeah. with Ford. You know, I have an idea of what I want, but there's also the nuances for, you know, other customers that I can't represent well. Yeah. So we work with others to get that, that yeah. other perspective. So, you know, when we say, you know, RTR stands for ready to rock. What that means to me is ready for anything, ready for, yeah anything that your day is going to throw at you. And we're thinking about our customer from the moment they walk up to the car, like what they feel yeah. to obviously driving it, what they can do on the track, off the track with their better half, whatever. And then when they're leaving the car, you know, that look back, how it makes them feel. So we're, we're, we're trying to encompass this very unique experience, you know, and there's yeah. so many untangibles that it's hard for us to like bottle up right? Like the friends that you make, you know, like people, you get an RTR, you're filling up gas, you're getting stopped and people are talking to you. Yeah. And you make, you know, it, you make fr friends that you never even knew that you needed because of yeah. a car or a Bronco, yeah. you know? So it's, it's really cool. And I just love, you know, meeting our owners and them expressing how it's just enhanced yeah. their life beyond what the, you know, they thought they were buying a car, but they bought something so much more. And yeah. for me, like that's, that's the goal. Like I just yeah. want people to have fun behind the wheel because it's yeah. been such a big part of my life. You know, I want to continue to see that. So, you know, like I said, this is, we're, you know, we're, everyone's out right now, but behind yeah. you is normally, this is normally, just to give you guys a little context, this is normally where the FD cars are. So we'll have three cars, Adam's, James, Chelsea's, or mine, depending upon which event me and Adam are splitting. And then this is traditionally where all the exhibition cars are. So we have mirrors of the FD cars, um, but they're all on their way to grid life and the Carlisle uh, event. And so, oh wow, well we can look at James's car. We could do a little quick, yeah. uh, you know, inspection of uh, damage <laughs> from, a, from a Formula Drift weekend. So you got a couple little kisses in the front. That's from Chelsea <laughs> rubbing, rubbing his door. Our biggest things are our own guys. Got but a little, you guys little, go through some body panels, don't you? A little you? too close to the walls, yeah. And funny story is we've made most of the carbon for these cars in-house. Really? And we don't do carbon in-house, but we do now. <laughs> because, because we got we got screwed over by a supplier, which is not a normal thing, but it obviously happened, and they basically destroyed the molds for our cars. Oh, the guys no. made these beautiful molds and they messed them up they put too much vacuum to them so we were in like a crunch so my team was like we're just going to make carbon so Whoa. they made a, a makeshift oven and we've made a lot of the body panels for this car because you gotta remember these cars don't exist yeah and it, you know this these didn't get built yesterday or we've been working on them for well yeah. over a year so wow um so it was it, it's been an interesting interesting ride 
Uh, but I will, I will show you, um, but just to give you like a look at the rear of a drift car. So it's a unibody of a Mustang, right? I mean, it's still very much a Mustang, Yeah. but we do make modifications for crashing. Yeah. So you'll see here, right? Like this, this bar is bent in. James would have rubbed the, would have rubbed the, the wall a little bit, maybe a little too much. But if that was, if that was not there to fold in, the nose of the car would go in. So it's like its own crush panel, basically. It's crushed substructure. And then when that happens, we just replace this bar instead of replacing the whole, you know, the whole unibody, basically. That's incredible. So these cars are built to, you know, get in the accidents that they see often when you're driving 100 yeah. miles an hour inches from walls. I didn't realize that there's so much involved into, because you don't, I, as a normal person, that is not, I, I really respect the whole drifting thing, but I've not been sure. like a yeah, big yeah. time follower of it. I didn't realize, you know, that there was so much involved in this. Cause I, I'm, I'm a Bronco fan. Like I've been Bronco my whole life. Yeah. I'm more of the off-road type of a person, but I'm also a car guy and that is incredible. I didn't realize you guys built the second half of that vehicle yeah. designed for for wrecking it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and also for quick repairs, cause we get five minutes to fix a car yeah. And uh, and so, you know, it's there's a lot to it that goes behind, just like any professional motorsport, you know, the tips and tricks and doing it for 20 years, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, you learn it. Did you want to look at the fun runner? The yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because most you're a Bronco of, guy. Okay. Yeah, most of our channel is, is all about Broncos. I okay. mean, and so most of the people that are watching this, this is probably going to be one of their most exciting things. Okay. Because, um, man, the suspension on this thing is ridiculous. Is yeah. this a mid-travel kit? Yeah, so this is, so, you know, we have, obviously we have um, RTR vehicles, and mm -hmm. then I have a, another company called Funhaver. Okay. And Funhaver Off-Road is my partnership with Lauren Healy, who is basically me and drifting. He's been off-road in for 20 years, Ultra 4, and he's effectively what got me hooked on Ultra 4 and got me racing off-road. So we have a facility in New Mexico that runs all of our off-road stuff. Okay. And so as a part of that, we've spawned off Fun Ever Off-Road parts. So RTR, you know, obviously we make awesome parts for Bronco and the Fun Ever Off-Road is a little bit more like hardcore. Yeah. Like RTR is very focused on like design, easy installation, no cutting, you know, very much, yep. you know, anyone can do it in the driveway. Whereas the Fun Ever parts are a little bit more Hardcore. So this is the Fun Runner. This vehicle is a, uh, a turnkey vehicle collaboration between RTR and Fun Haver Off Road. Okay. So it's the Fun Runner. So um, this has uh, suspension wise, uh, we've widened the track um, about three inches on each side. It's got the Fox Performance Elite uh, shocks on it. Okay. Uh, which we'll be selling separately and then as a complete kit. And then this has our mid travel kit on it. Uh, so this very similar like as far as travel wise is very raptor-esque yeah uh, obviously you don't get the live valve with it but yeah. this would be an option to get that type of travel that type of stance if you are yeah. a regular bronco owner okay um do so you, got, do you feel like it's outside of the live valve do you think that this suspension would perform as well as or better than a raptor bronco yes okay yes the live valve is the game changer Okay. though so we obviously we don't have that and there's no yeah. way to get that on yeah. this but as far as you know capability in the desert you know travel droop compression travel yeah. all that very similar okay um it's a very similar uh track width and ride height adjustment okay. as as raptor as well okay uh, it just works well in that that configuration yeah um but so, uh, you know, got the upper arm, got the lower arm, and then this kit uses the factory spindle. Okay. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, that larger axles. That is quite axles. the tie rod. <laughs> yep, <laughs> the serious is, tie rod. No kidding. Yep. Is that a factory steering box or do you guys upgrade that as well? This is the factory steering box, but okay. we do have a billet uh, box that we're using that we've been developing with 74 awesome. weld. Yeah. So that's an option. And then obviously Ford performance okay. now has the uprated, uh, steering rack available as well. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, that is a, that is a thing when you start getting larger tires and start extending the droop travel and stuff, you know, yeah. you put a lot of load on the factory rack. So yeah. that certainly is a thing. Okay. Um, we only see failures. We, I've never seen a failure like in the desert or jumping or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's only under like, high load in rocks. Yeah. 
Um, but you know, a lot of people are putting 37s on their trucks, that bigger torsional load, and they're yeah. seeing, starting to see some issues. So yeah, I guess you get a little bit of tire slippage, and then all of a sudden it catches, and that's what probably yep. does that tie rod in. Yep. So yep. or the the steering rack exactly. or whatever it is. Yeah, so. it depends on what the angle's at. Yeah. And a lot of these kits that are coming out, the, the you know the the lift kits and stuff, people aren't engineering them to stay within the the angles. So. Yeah. That's another place that we're really focused on with oh, the products awesome. that we're putting out. Obviously, uh, RTR grill. Yeah. Uh, this has a removable center bar, so you can get a you know pull this off, and you can get one that has lights and set in it. And we have really? a couple other options that that are going to come with this center bar. So if you bought one of our grills, you'd be able to replace it yeah. with some accessories. For RTR, right? We're we didn't want to change the front bumper. Yeah. Because of all the crash testing and all of that. But like I said, you know, fun hour is a little more hardcore approach so everything is you know as high and tight as possible mm -hmm. yeah you can see the zorb bars here which i don't love that like rtr would never have those exposed but for fun aver you know we know there's a customer that wants that little more just full-blown function you know where yeah. they can roll up to a boulder this high and pull up on it you yeah. know um so that's the that's the difference in in approach um but yeah, and that's that's that. It's Obviously, bead locks in the interior. We did, uh, you know, we did we did Recaros all the way around. This is a oh wow a seat that we developed with Recaro with some unique uh, some unique magic inside of the the seats. Uh, we work with them to develop a race a race seat. So yeah, we, man, that is gorgeous. That. Yeah, this this thing is really fun. We've had a ton of fun with it. We built the two door. Uh, we've got a couple four doors out there. Um, but this has been the, the test mule yeah. for this program. So we haven't fully launched the fun runners to be available, but they will in the future. So. Fantastic. Well, m call me first. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll be the first ones to offer them. Yeah. And my, my, you know, you're building that Bronco RTR. That's my, yeah. you know, I have a personal one and I absolutely love it. You know, I yeah. love what, well, you know, as far as the performance, um, you know, we just added some protection because the Bronco yeah. stock is amazing. You know, yeah. and we obviously have the calibration you can get, but um you know it's the the rock rails and one thing with these rock sliders i don't know if you noticed but it does act as a step but there's also a tire kick out or so a, that is a tree a, kick out okay that that so that's the purpose for that i actually was curious what that is so yeah. that's a functional rock slider yeah absolutely does yeah it, i mean you can jack the truck up with this really so you, you, uh, you answered yeah. my question so you can full support the weight of the vehicle. absolutely yep. that's awesome yep and so um you know these ones bolt to the factory location they also give you a little bit more body coverage than yeah. the factory rock sliders. Yeah. Um, and and they also give you a little spot to, to put And that's your foot. RTR. That's not fun hammer. That's RTR. Correct. Yep. Okay. yep. This is the RTR. I know that's yeah. kind of confusing. Um, but No, um, I don't think it's confusing. I yeah. think it I think it's uh, I think it's perfect. That's a I did not realize that was a functional rock slider. I thought that was just a step. Oh yeah, no. No, it's a functional rock slider. Um, and then it also doubles as a step. And then the reason why okay. we have this here is this is a tree kick out. So like if you're on some tighter trails and you do get in a bind, you're not gonna get your body and this will actually push your truck over for you. So, Spoken some, like some, you are speaking like someone that has had experience in that oh regard. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and when we made that, I was like, that's what we absolutely need. That is fantastic. Um, well, so, that's yeah. a great looking Bronco, man. Thank you, man. That is a great looking Bronco. Beautiful shop. Thank you for letting me uh, crash your party for about an hour or so. And uh, anything, uh, any closing remarks you want to make to the camera? No, just thank you. I'm, I'm grateful to be working with you guys. You guys do an awesome job. I love the vibe and, and yeah. um, I'm really excited for, you know, people in your Absolutely. area. And I know you saw all over the place, but people yeah. in your area to be able to start, you know, getting their hands on RTR. And I think you guys are going to do an awesome job with the lifestyle around the brand yeah. which for us is extremely important like we want our customers to feel the passion and get that full experience yeah. so man thank you so much thank for your you, time appreciate, appreciate you it. thank you guys very much and if you have any other questions yeah you know what to do give us a call if you want to order your next rtr mustang bronco whatever it is the phone number's right there if you haven't already done so leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a single video peace